Greetings, fellow seekers of wisdom and spirituality. Today, we're diving deep into the spiritual treasury of John Henry Newman prayers. Let's get started. Are you seeking deeper communion with God? The profound John Henry Newman prayers can start you on an incredible spiritual journey. John Henry Newman prayers, stemming from his own struggles and longing for closeness with the divine, contain deep wisdom and beauty. For over a century, John Henry Newman prayers have moved and inspired Christians across denominations. This renowned 19th century theologian and poet gave the world enduring texts such as Lead, Kindly Light, and the beloved meditation The Pillar of the Cloud. His prayers directly reflect the depth of his personal spirituality by exploring John Henry Newman's impassioned and lyric prayers, anyone can foster a more sincere, heartfelt relationship with God. In his own life, Newman turned to prayer during seasons of difficulty, doubt, and discernment. He walked with God through seasons of suffering and change. Newman's prayers beckon all Christians to cultivate an authentic, intimate prayer life amid life's varied circumstances. This blog unearths the richness of John Henry Newman prayers for spiritual seekers today. Let's delve into Newman's profound petitions, confessions, and hymns to be drawn closer to the divine presence. Come discover how John Henry Newman's prayers can speak to your soul and ignite your faith anew. What are some of John Henry Newman's most famous prayers? John Henry Newman prayers have inspired Christians for over a century. Some of his most famous prayers come from his poems, sermons, and published collections of prayers. For example, one beloved John Henry Newman prayers is the poem Lead, Kindly Light, which he wrote during a difficult period in his life. The opening lines petition God to guide him forward, lead, kindly light, amid the encircling gloom. Lead thou me on. Another famous John Henry Newman prayers is the poem The Pillar of the Cloud, which expresses trust in God's providential care. John Henry Newman's best known published prayers include those in his book Meditations and Devotions. Two of the most famous are A Prayer in Sickness and A Prayer for Humility. In A Prayer for Humility, Newman expresses the desire to be delivered from pride and to cultivate humility in its place. He asks God to make him like a little child and prays, Give me the simple faith of a child, let me bring thee my best, and not keep back the worst. This beautiful prayer perfectly captures Newman's spirituality. What themes run through John Henry Newman's prayers? Several major spiritual themes emerge consistently throughout John Henry Newman prayers. These include humility, trusting God's guidance, devotion to God's will, reliance on God's grace, and petitions for personal holiness. Newman firmly believed that human beings were sinful by nature, and many of his prayers focus on overcoming pride and living in humble obedience to God. For example, in his Litany of Penitence, Newman prays repeatedly for mercy and forgiveness for sins of thought, word, and deed. Other prominent themes in John Henry Newman prayers are petitions for guidance and willingness to follow God's path, no matter the cost. As mentioned previously, these themes feature prominently in Lead, Kindly Light. Additional John Henry Newman prayers that focus on guidance include a prayer to the Holy Spirit and a prayer for conformity to God's will. The prayers reflect Newman's deep trust in God's providential leading. The final major motif is Newman's emphasis on grace and dependence on God rather than personal merit. This features in his prayers for humility as well as requests for spiritual transformation and growth in holiness. For instance, in a prayer to attain heaven, he asks for an increase of grace and spiritual strength to lead a holy life. Newman firmly believed human efforts alone were insufficient and God's grace was essential. How did John Henry Newman prayers reflect his spiritual beliefs? As an Anglican priest and later a Catholic cardinal, John Henry Newman's profound spirituality shines through his prayers. Several core elements of his spiritual beliefs frequently appear. First, his high view of Christ's incarnation led him to pray often to Christ as a personal savior. He also had a Marian spirituality rooted in devotion to the Virgin Mary as the mother of God. Newman's belief in the communion of saints, including praying to saints as intercessors, emerges through prayers like his prayer to Saint Philip Mary. His esteem for the church and the sacraments also appears in prayers for the Pope in unity within the Catholic Church. Newman prayed fervently for the church to flourish and overcome doctrinal divisions. Some additional hallmarks of Newman's spirituality reflected in his prayers were his devotion to conscience, seen in his Sermon on Conscience, his belief in development of doctrine, from his famous essay on the development of Christian doctrine, and his emphasis on dogma and reason enlightened by faith. Newman prayed to better know God and his truth. He also had a passion for education and cultivated holiness, so his prayers often focus on those topics. In summary, studying John Henry Newman prayers provides rich insight into his personal spirituality. What role did prayer play in John Henry Newman's life? Throughout his life, prayer played an absolutely vital role for John Henry Newman. 
From his youth, he cultivated a habit of daily prayer and devotion, which only deepened with age. Newman prayed frequently, both privately and publicly, as an Anglican and Catholic cleric leading congregations. His sermons, writings, and personal letters all demonstrate how prayer permeated his interior life. In particular, Newman relied on prayer during seasons of difficulty and doubt. For example, he wrote Lead, kindly light while deathly ill during a journey in Italy. He turned to prayer in making the painful decision to leave the Church of England for Rome. Newman also frequently prayed for guidance when wrestling with doctrinal questions and uncertainties. Beyond personal petitions, Newman believed deeply in prayer's power to transform human hearts. As a pastor and minister, he encouraged others to pray by publishing collections of prayers, sermons on prayer, and meditations to draw believers closer to God. For Newman, prayer was sustenance for daily life and a means of deepening one's relationship with the divine. His entire spirituality was rooted in the rich prayer life he cultivated from an early age. When did John Henry Newman write his most well-known prayers? Many of John Henry Newman prayers come from key periods of difficulty, spiritual searching, and transition in his life. For example, two of his most beloved prayers lead, Kindly Light and The Pillar of the Cloud were written in 1833 during a traumatic journey to Italy in which he fell dangerously ill. This experience led him to rely more fully on God's guidance and care. Several other well-known Newman prayers were written around 1845, when as an Anglican priest he was grappling with doubts about the Church of England and considering converting to Catholicism. Prayers from this period, later published in verses on various occasions, express longing for truth and spiritual homecoming. Example include the sign of the cross, the call of St. Matthew, and the walk in the garden. After Newman joined the Catholic Church in 1845, his prayers increasingly focused on themes of finding rest and submission to God's will, devotion to Christ, and petitions for the Church. His famous poem The Dream of Gerontius, which depicts the soul's journey after death, was published in 1865, and in 1875 he published Meditations and Devotions, a collection of prayers he had written throughout his life, including the two noted earlier, A Prayer in Sickness and a prayer for humility. So while Newman wrote heartfelt prayers throughout his life, key times of personal challenge, discernment, and transition called forth some of his most eloquent and inspiring petitions to God. These continue providing spiritual guidance today. What events in John Henry Newman's life influenced his prayers? John Henry Newman prayers were shaped by his experiences, relationships, and the intellectual and spiritual questions with which he grappled. As previously noted, illness during his Mediterranean journey in 1833 left a profound mark. Prayers from this time, including lead, kindly light, express absolute trust in God amid suffering and uncertainty. Newman's friendship with John Kebbell and other leaders of the Oxford movement in the 1830s fostered his interest in early church writers, which catalyzed his increasing disaffection with Protestant theology. His prayers from the early 1840s, before his conversion, display agonizing over leaving the Church of England he loved. Loss also surfaced in Newman's prayers. The death of his close friend Hurl Froud in 1836, after parted on conflicted terms, elicited prayers grieving the permanent loss of a soulmate, and the death of Newman's beloved sister Mary in 1828 gave rise to the intimate prayer comfort and bereavement. John Henry Newman prayers changed after his conversion to Catholicism, reflecting his spiritual homecoming and interest in teachings like the intercession of saints. As he grew older, Newman's prayers expressed more devotion to Christ's sacrifice and the Eucharist. Events throughout his life left an indelible imprint on Newman's prayer life. How can John Henry Newman prayers inspire my own prayer life. For modern Christians, John Henry Newman prayers can provide tremendous inspiration for nurturing one's spiritual life through heartfelt dialogue with God. Newman shows prayer is not just repeating static formulas, but rather opening one's heart to speak honestly with the Creator. He models being real and vulnerable about struggles while voicing praise and gratitude alongside petitions. John Henry Newman prayers demonstrate prayerfulness should infuse one's whole life, not be limited to set times. He turned to God amid daily work, during intellectual and spiritual crises, and while experiencing intense emotions of sorrow, loss, or joy. Newman found prayer vital for discerning God's will when facing decisions. His example inspires believers to pray without ceasing about everything. Most importantly, the depth and sincerity of John Henry Newman prayers encourage removing distractions and focusing intently on speaking with and listening to God. Through his rich legacy of prayers, John Henry Newman challenges all Christians to cultivate a deep, authentic, and constant life of prayer. Learning about our Catholic saints and church history will deepen your faith so much. Prayer is also such an important aspect of growing in your faith. Meditating on the gospel for at least a few minutes a day can dramatically deepen your faith. Are you familiar with the gospel? I believe that you were brought to this video today for a reason. 
Let's take a moment to think about the gospel and what the religion of Christianity is all about. The Bible tells us that all of us have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God and that we all need a savior because of this. Romans 3.23 Because of this, God sent his one and only son to us to be the atonement for our sins. As it says in John 3.16, God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. You see, in Malachi 3 to 6, God says, I am the Lord, and I do not change. He has always required a blood sacrifice for the atonement of sins. He says this in Leviticus 17 11, For the life of a creature is in the blood, and I have given it to you to make atonement for yourselves on the altar. It is the blood that makes atonement for one's life. He also repeats this in the New Testament when he says in Hebrews 9.22, Without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sins. This is why Jesus, God in the flesh, had to come into the world and live under the law, which are the Ten Commandments, to redeem those who were under the law. Have you obeyed the entire law of the Lord? Have you ever stolen anything, even if it was small? Have you ever lied? Have you ever not kept Sunday as a day of rest and worship of the Lord? Have you ever looked with lust at another person that you were not married to or done physical things with a person you were not married to. Have you ever desired something that your friend or neighbor had that didn't belong to you? To be honest, it's easy to break these laws because our nature is inclined to sin. The Bible says that if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. However, it says in 1 John 1-8 and 9, If we confess our sins, God is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. What a merciful and loving God we serve. Because God loves us so much, in Isaiah 53, 10, it says, Yet it was the will of the Lord to crush Jesus when his soul makes an offering for guilt. Jesus was born of a virgin, died on the cross, and rose from the dead. He conquered sin and death, and because he rose from the dead, he promises to raise us from the dead after we die too. This is the glorious gospel. The next step after a person has received the gospel is to go to RCIA at your local Catholic church. You can search for the nearest church on Google and call them to see when the next classes start. If they don't start for some months, you can still meet with the director and get some books to read to tie you over before it starts. I will be praying for you about all of this. This is the road to eternal life. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to check out our other videos about inspiring saints. I appreciate you taking the time to view this video. Make sure to check out the links below in the description so you can grab your We Are Saintly Catholic t-shirt and be a part of our We Are Saintly Catholic community by signing up for our email list and joining us on Patreon. I give you free saint printables each month, a free We Are Saintly shirt each year, shoutouts, and more in Patreon as a special thank you for being a part of this amazing Catholic community. Are you considering taking a Catholic pill pilgrimage to see St. John Henry Newman after learning about him today. I've traveled to lots of places, and I'm well versed in the things you may need along the way, so I've compiled a list of links in the description below where you can find cheap flights, car rentals, destination packages, and more. Save this video so you have those links handy and visit our blog to learn about more holy saints that will ignite your faith. I sincerely hope that learning about the John Henry Newman prayers has brought you a sense of comfort and tranquility. If you found this video to be beneficial, please do not hesitate to give it a thumbs up, share it with others, and subscribe to our channel. Always remember to keep the faith and believe in the power of prayer. May God bless you and provide you with guidance on your journey. Until we meet again, take care of yourself, keep going to church, reading your Bible, praying your rosary, and sharing the gospel. I'm praying for you in all of this.